it's rare that a device makes it into my hands that I have no idea what to expect. And the Lunar Artifacts pointer instrument is one such device. Lunar Artifacts is not a company that I'd heard of, and that's because their primary focus is aesthetics. And I'm someone who's more of a practical kind of person, so their auto engineering inspired devices are not usually on my radar, and so I am ecstatic to get my hands on such a premium device. And when I say premium, I mean premium. Uh, and thankfully they sent us some of the other accessories I was kind of excited about. They have a little grip attachment and they have a mouse pad. They're beautiful full grain leather made from French calves. <laughs> mouse pad uh, is quite a sight to behold. Uh, it's got equestrian inspired stitching. Uh, it feels quite good um, in terms of, you know, just a little cushiness, but not so much that it would interfere with your play. That being said, this is like the size of a mouse. <laughs> like you put a mouse on here, uh, there's not much movement. But again, we're not worried about performance. We're worried about aesthetics. This looked much more premium on the website. I thought it was gonna be, you know, double quilted, very cushy material. It's just cardboard, you know, folded or pressed to look much more premium than it is. That's fine. It looks like the mouse made it here in one piece. Inside the box, we have our little quick start guide, our tasty snack for later, and finally, our three foot long type A to type C cable. It's braided, which is nice, uh, but the connectors don't look super premium. Although you can plug it in and use the mouse in a wired mode, I would primarily just charge it and use it in one of its wireless modes. That's it for the box. Just like the mouse pad, the top of the mouse comes equipped with this premium full grain leather. It's available in this brown or black. I definitely prefer the brown. I think if I'm getting a leather mouse, I want it to be very clear from a distance that I paid for it. There's a little accent stitch right at the seam of the leather. One of the ideas behind this mouse is that this is the last mouse you'll ever buy. You're gonna keep it for your entire life and they encourage you to use it and for the leather to build character. As your skin reacts, as you scuff it, as you use it, the color will slightly change and it'll gain that like rich, deep, aged leather look, which I think is actually kind of cool. What I don't love, but I think a lot of people will, is this uncoated brass bottom. You can already see it's disgusting. And thankfully it's only on the bottom, so I don't think you'll be hyper aware of the grease you're tracking onto it. You might notice the grease on the mouse wheel that is also this uncoated brass. That's a shitty mouse wheel. It's just kind of like a, a dead fish that you're kind of like pushing up a hill. Like, eh, eh, eh. I don't like that there's no clickiness as you scroll. There's a little bit of a tactile feedback, but it feels more like the gentle whisper of a click in your ear on a cool summer day. That being said, the shape of the mouse is quite comfortable. It fits in my hand. Uh, very naturally. I find my pinky finger is kind of a little trapped under. It's a very unique shape that the top is so large and the bottom is quite small. Like that's the size of one of those cheap Logitech Bluetooth mice you get for 20 bucks. From the photos, which they definitely don't have any hands in their photos because they want to showcase the aesthetics of the mouse. It's certainly not ergonomic and I don't think that this would be a very comfortable mouse to use for long periods of time. But this mouse isn't for people that do actual work. It's for people, you know, that order other people to do work. You know, the people we're gonna eat in a couple years. Okay, so this black thing is just to guard the leather and the buttons. These buttons are quite resistant. I don't know if it's the extra stretch from the leather that's making it harder to press, but it takes quite a bit of force to actuate these switches and they feel quite inconsistent, especially at the edges. The way I grip my mouse, my fingers end up being back here, which takes more force, but feels more consistent. And there's only one other button, which is the scroll wheel press. On the bottom, on the sides, there's nothing else. Overall, not a great button experience. So this is kind of limiting its functionality in a lot of ways, but again, it's for people that are not planning on using this for heavy workloads. While we're on the topic of ergonomics, 
We also got the grip accessory from Looter Artifacts that just clips in, in a kind of clever way. It's aesthetically very non-pleasing, especially as we have the brown leather, the black kind of dark gray plastic just looks really out of place. It's not cheap plastic, but I wouldn't call it particularly premium feeling. When I grip it, my fourth finger and my thumb naturally rest on the scoops of the grip. It widens the stance of the mouse, making it feel like a much older type mouse. It's actually more comfortable because I don't feel like I have to squeeze my hand as tight, but it does accentuate this pinky kind of being forced to cross under. I don't know why they thought this was okay. They're selling this beautiful premium combo and then this just cheap plastic piece that just takes away from it. Like I feel like this could be a 3D printed piece that I, I made at home. Another reason I would probably take that piece off is that this is an already exceptionally heavy mouse. The brass variant is 200 grams. Again, this is not a functional workhorse mouse. This is really an aesthetics premium thing. Heavy things feel more premium. You can get the aluminum variant. That's a more silver finish and that's 125 grams, a lot closer to something that I would feel comfortable using every day without getting uh, RSI. What really shocks me about this mouse is that considering how premium it is, how heavy it is, they compromise so strongly on its specs and sensor. This mouse has the PixArt PAW3805 sensor, which doesn't show up on flawless sensor lists. Uh, it's a more efficient sensor, but when you compare it specs for specs versus some of the higher end sensors, it starts to be a little bit questionable of a choice. It's CPI uh, is advertised at a max of 3000, uh, you know, compared to the 26,000, 30,000 of the Logitech and Razer high-end mice. It's inches per second tracking is 70 versus the Razer Viper Signature Minis 750 <laughs> and a max force of 10 Gs versus 75 Gs. That is fine for a mouse that you're using to answer emails, fill out Excel spreadsheets and abuse your workers, but that's kind of disappointing when I look at this mouse and thought it was gonna be a no compromise mouse. It's, it's honestly kind of baffling. There's $50 mice that have way better sensor technology than this. I have never seen so many buttons on the bottom of a mouse. They, they didn't put any on the side, so they put them all here. On the bottom, we have our on off switch. We have our wireless mode toggle between 2.4 gigahertz mode and Bluetooth. You can also run this mouse in a wired mode. We have our DPI switch. Although I'm not switching DPIs, do I have to hold it? Oh, I do have to hold it. What is going on? This button sucks. Is it already jammed in? This is the worst DPI button I've ever pressed in my life. I'm not exaggerating, it's not hyperbole. This thing is like mushy and it like got caught underneath. Finally on the bottom we have our dongle. I really appreciate a wireless dongle spot. Uh, even on a much lighter mouse, I think it's worth the three grams extra of plastic to engineer a spot for a wireless dongle to go so you don't lose it. Uh, and it's just a little type A dongle, you know, just a pretty generic thing. Besides that, on the bottom we have these very small glide pads that are sort of misaligned. Uh, this edge is kind of coming up. I doubt you'll be able to see it on the camera uh, super well. You can kind of see that it's imperfect there. Kind of disappointing when you're getting a premium product and they haven't taken the time to carefully put everything on here. It's not a great gliding experience. Yeah, part of it is that it weighs so much, but it does look good. On the front, we have our Type-C port. You can charge through that, but there's also wireless Qi charging, which is a pretty neat feature. The battery on the inside is an 850 milliamp battery, which is adequate, especially if you're planning on using the Bluetooth modes. They don't advertise a battery life in terms of hours, but I imagine it's fine. The Pixar 3805 is a pretty efficient sensor, so it does feel so good. Okay, I take it all back. I love this mouse. One thing I've never seen a manufacturer advertise is the type of connector the battery uses on the inside of the mouse. And the reason they do that is part of the design sensibility is that this mouse is supposed to last you forever and they've rightfully designed repairability into the core of this device. That's why they advertise the battery connector type. That's just a generic little battery type. You can find 850 milliamp batteries with that connector type on AliExpress. So that's great. 
I'm very excited to open this up, check that out, and also just to try it out and see how it feels after I tell you about our sponsor, Moment. Thanks to Moment for sponsoring this video. Are you a creative looking to make sure you have the best gear to capture your vision? Moment is here to help, offering photo and video equipment for every occasion. Moment works with only the best brands, such as Sony, Fujifilm, and Leica. They even produce their own high quality gear. So go to the link below and check out Moment's carefully curated catalog of camera gear. The bottom setting is 800 DPI, which is good. We go to unusual sensitivities of 1200, 2000, and 3000. 3000 makes sense, that's the highest sensitivity that this sensor offers, but it's usually increments of 400 or 800 DPI that we're switching, and so this mouse, clearly not designed for gamers or people that are used to gaming settings. If you're using this mouse as a work mouse, I think it would be decently adequate, although I think you would get very frustrated by this scroll. It has almost no tactile feedback and that's a bit of a bummer. It also has very little rise when put next to the buttons. Looks good, not very practical. Uh, the tracking seems adequate. I'm using the 2.4 gigahertz mode. All right, I guess we'll play a game. Every time I have to lift it at a bit of an angle and it reads it and so every time I swipe it, the mouse actually goes back. That's not a great experience. I'm gonna do it with this mouse pad. Uh, for anything other than emails, this is hugely inadequate in size. <sighs> I've heard that before. I would highly recommend getting something larger, you know, like this WAN desk pad from LTTstore.com. <laughs> you ever seen those videos of strong men pulling trains just like single-handedly? That's what I feel like when I'm moving this mouse. I feel like I'm just like, Ugh! Ugh! oh God. And maybe, you know, I'll get a really jacked right arm. I'm gonna get to one encounter just to make sure, but there's no way this is a good gaming mouse. To be fair to Lunar Artifacts, they never claimed it was. I don't know if you can tell by the expression on my face, but I'm not having a great time. My forearm already hurts. I've been playing for like two minutes. I just need to hit the gym more. You could use this as a gaming mouse, but it's, not a good time. The tracking's fine. Uh, the lift-off distance issue persists. The clicking is especially frustrating because you have to put so much pressure to get a full click. In a game, you don't really want that. I certainly don't. This mouse is gonna be exceptionally easy to pull apart. I'm quite impressed already. This piece is actually replaceable if it gets too damaged or if the patina becomes a gross human hand-shaped mess, you know, two fingers and a bit of palm and then the rest is all fresh baby calf skin. Once we get to this level, it's just these four screws. Wow, that's a long screw. All right, we've taken off the screws. This layer goes up. This is exactly the type of battery that I found on AliExpress. Easily replaceable for like $3. That's friggin' sweet. So far, I've been quite impressed with the repairability of this, but you can hear there's an adhesive layer to this battery. That's fine to keep it secured, but there's already this little latch thing that I thought was doing an okay job. I wasn't gonna take out this little PCB, but wow, did it ever come out so easily. We got our little sensor, we got our PCB. I still hate this. I don't know why they thought this was an acceptable scroll wheel. I wonder if you could easily replace it. You can easily replace these switches. They're just mouse switches you can just easily pull out and drop in. Other than that, a pretty simple device. We have our little wireless charging pad. And then if you take out the dongle, it's really just this big brass piece with molded plastic in the bottom that you can pop out. They're selling some replacement parts on their site at a bit of a premium, like $15 for switches uh, is a lot more than you can find elsewhere, but it's nice that they offer it, and if you're the kind of person that is eyeing this mouse, paying a little bit of a premium for convenience and knowing that you're getting the right parts might be worth it. And pay a premium you shall. This mouse costs $250. That's not the most expensive mouse out there, but considering it's not a good mouse, that's a lot of money. I really like the leather. I think the shape is fine. I think overall, quite aesthetically pleasing. And if that's the priority, if you're making this, you know, classically masculine workspace, I think this could fit in. You know, your room has gold accents. You can make this quite an attractive little mouse and mouse pad. But if you're someone that does a lot of work at their desk and you are concerned with, you know, a <laughs> adequate performance, 
this is not something I can recommend to you. Can you think of any alternatives? Of yes. A nicer looking mouse? I'll give credit to Lunar Artifacts. Most mice kind of have a gamery look to them. Even, you know, office ones are starting to have that tendency. You can get ergo mice that are a little classier. I think the MX Master is a fairly classy looking mouse, but it's still plastic and shiny metal, uh, and it's not aesthetically pleasing in the way that something as classy as this would be. As hard as I've been on this mouse, it's kind of hard to find aesthetically focused mice. And I know for some people that is a priority. And so if that's, that is a priority to you and you like the look of this, it's an adequate mouse. It does its job, it works, it connects, the tracking is fine. It's not a great mouse experience, but you're not buying this for that. You're buying it for the looks and that's okay. You know what else is okay? Sticking around to watch another short circuit. Why not check out our Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition mouse? Something basically the same price, but in my opinion, a much more impressive piece of technology.